Hey what's happening guys, Chris here, and today I'm going to be running over a bunch of tips and tricks to help you out whilst playing on Battlefield 1. Some of these things you might already know, especially if you play the game a lot, but hopefully you'll learn something new in this guide. Now I'm going to kick this list off with a pretty basic tip regarding bayonets. Although they do give you a sudden burst of speed, allowing you to charge forwards quicker than normal, bayonet charging isn't exactly a more effective way of covering open ground faster, as because of that cooldown period, once the charge is over, it's going to slow you right down, limiting you to a walking speed, and so it's actually just as effective to continuously run without the charge to get to where you need to go. Though I will say that the extra speed gained from the bayonet charge can be very useful for dashing off to nearby cover, and it can be also good for retreating to the next sector in operations when you're being pushed back. Another fairly basic tip about the bayonet is the fact that they can kill elite class players instantly, so if you find an enemy sentry or a flame trooper marching around giving everyone a hard time, then they can be very easily taken down with one swift bayonet strike. It doesn't matter how much health they've got, nothing's going to save them from that lethal blade. The AT rocket gun is also a very deadly tool to use against elite class soldiers, as a direct hit should be enough to kill them straight away, along with a melee strike from behind too. So although the elite class soldiers might seem ridiculously powerful at times, there are a few simple ways to take them down easily. If you're using a rifle which uses 5 round stripper clips, and said rifle holds a couple of clips when it's fully reloaded, just like the SMLE Mark III does, then it's often best to try and reload in multiples of 5 if you want to reload as fast as possible with that weapon, as otherwise you'll have to manually load the gun with individual bullets, which is going to cost you more time, time that sometimes you just don't have. Whilst we're on the subject of reloading, a tip for shotgun, rifle and revolver users now, it's best to get to grips with the reload cancel technique which basically lets you choose how many rounds or shells you want to put back into the gun without having to wait for a full reload animation to take place, giving you a few less shots for a bit of extra time. Reload cancelling can be done by simply double tapping the weapon switch button, leaving the gun with the ammo you put into it whilst the reload was taking place, but cutting it a bit shorter, allowing you to get back into the fight a bit quicker, which can be life saving if you know an enemy is hunting you down in close proximities. Even if you're playing on your own and none of your buddies are online, always join into a squad anyway, as you'll gain extra points for doing squad related things, like completing orders, reviving squad members, and generally providing assistance. Plus the other squad mates will also act as spawn points too, giving you quicker access to specific areas on the map, so it's often best to join into a fairly big squad with 3 or 4 other people in it if you want a few extra spawn points. Another squad related tip is to issue orders for you and the other squad members to go out and complete. You can do this if you're the leader of the squad and it's a great way to gain some extra points. Just simply issue an order by spotting an objective to defend or attack, and once you and your squad complete the request, you'll be granted with those extra points, which can help you out quite a lot if you're trying to level up fast. If you're in a squad with a leader who doesn't really want to dish out any orders, you can essentially steal their position from them by requesting an order from them via the Comoros wheel. If the leader doesn't issue any orders within a minute, then you'll assume the role of the new squad leader. No matter what gun you're using, switching over to your secondary weapon is always going to be faster to do than to reload your primary, so if you're completely out of bullets in the middle of a gunfight, don't forget to use those handguns, as they can save your life more often than you'd think. Listen out for enemy movements on your headphones or a surround sound system for a better awareness of your surroundings. If you can see that there aren't any teammates nearby on the minimap, but you can hear footsteps of someone running around nearby, then that's going to be an enemy player. So just think twice about running around that wall or into that room, and if the footsteps are pretty loud, you might want to watch your six, as it could be an enemy running up behind you, getting ready to whack you over the head with a club. Tank shots, K bullets and AT rocket rounds against armoured vehicles can often ricochet if the vehicle is at a bit of an angle, dealing far less damage. It's often best to try and line your shots up so that they land straight on to deal more damage. This can be a very useful thing to know if you're in a tank battle with another armoured vehicle, as if you try to position yourself at a bit of an angle facing the enemy player, then you're going to have more of a tactical advantage, as they'll find it a lot harder to deal damage on you. Go pro more often to avoid getting hit. It's a very good thing to do if you need to reload, as you'll be a much smaller target to spot than if you were just stood up in the open, and a lot of the time, lying down in some parts of the map with a lot of debris and grass can help to conceal your position. Going prone in a crater made by an explosive will usually help to block lines of sight, and if you're capturing an objective and there's some bushes, long grass or rubble scattered around, hiding amongst these will help to conceal your position. 
I'd definitely advise switching your crouch and melee buttons around if you play on console, as this will let you drop to the floor a lot easier whenever you need to. Although cable bullets might not seem like the most useful thing to have equipped at times, and they aren't really going to deal any extra damage to soldiers as opposed to the normal bullets, they are actually a bit more effective against elite classes wearing that thicker armour. So if you're playing as a scout and you've got a few cable bullets, it's best to switch over to them when taking on an elite class player. They're also pretty good for preventing tank drivers from repairing, as although they only deal a very small amount of damage towards tanks, it's still enough to cut off their repair, allowing assault players to close in with their explosives. When you're using shotguns, always aim for the upper chest. This way, you're going to maximise the amount of pellets you land onto your opponent, and therefore deal the most damage. Aiming for the head is generally going to be a bad idea, as although it seems like it would be the best place to shoot, it actually isn't. Unlike other weapons, shotguns don't actually deal any extra damage for headshots, and because the head is a fairly small part of the body, less pellets are likely to land on target. When you're playing as a medic or support, a good way to gain lots of easy points is just to throw down a health or ammo crate along a popular route or a busy doorway, and anyone passing through will regain that lost health or ammo, netting you lots of points. Plus it'll also help your teammates out too, which is always a good thing. Now a lot of people might not know that you can temporarily dive underwater when you're swimming. Not that you really need to spend a lot of time in the water in Battlefield 1, but when you do, you're often best to duck under with the crouch button, as this will prevent you from being spotted and make you a less vulnerable target treading water on the top. Though do remember that because you're a virtual human being instead of a fish, you will need to resurface after a few seconds to catch your breath, before you can dive back down again. Don't just use those little red dots on the minimap to determine where your enemies are, use your teammates positions too, as if there's a room with a lot of them inside, or an area with lots of teammates in it, then more often than not, it's usually pretty safe to advance through. Though if there isn't any teammates in the room or area you're about to enter, take extra precaution and be wary about how quickly you move on through it, as there just might be an enemy squad waiting to pounce on you. If you see an elite player on your team and you just happen to be playing as a support or medic, then be a good sport and throw down some health or ammo for them. They'll most likely need it most, as it takes a lot longer for them to regain health, plus they've got no way to switch weapons or picking up drop weapons either. So if they're completely out of ammo, well, they're pretty screwed. Sliding around corners by running and tapping the crouch button is a pretty fun way to surprise and take out an enemy, as you'll be a tougher target to hit, and you'll also have slightly better spread because you're in a crouched position. This is usually most effective with shorter range guns like the Assault Shotguns and SMGs, though it also works quite well with hipfire trench variants too. Because Battlefield 1 features destructible environments and buildings, sometimes it's best to just use this factor to your advantage, and instead of walking into a building with a bunch of enemies in it, perhaps one which is in a capture zone on a conquest map, instead of going in the obvious way using the front door, which will probably end with you getting your head blown off by a shotgun, if you're a support or assault player, just use some of your gadgets like the limpet charge or dynamite to destroy the walls, create your own less predictable doorway, and also cause damage to the enemies inside by the falling rubble and the explosion itself. When you're attacking an objective, it's always better to use flanking routes around the objective to reach it more safely. This is a very useful tactic in rush and operation specifically, as the enemy players are less likely to notice you running around the sides, as most of the time, they're too focused on all the action going on in the middle, on the more obvious routes. When combined with smoke grenades and a well-coordinated squad, you can quite easily sneak around all the chaos and surprise the enemy from behind, take the objective and lead your team to victory. And last step of the day, if you're being hunted down by a sniper in the distance, as you keep seeing bullets whiz past your head, you're usually best running in a random zigzag sort of way, to make it a hell of a lot harder for that sniper to land their shots. As a general rule for when a sniper is trying to take you out, whatever you do, never run in a straight line, as a good sniper can quite easily just line their scope up in the direction that you're running in and just pull the trigger as soon as you walk on through it. So that's pretty much it for this one guys, feel free to share any tips and tricks that you have down in the comments below, there's obviously tons more out there, but for now, these are some of the more useful ones that I like to keep in mind whilst playing on Battlefield 1. Give me a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe for loads more in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.